Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into the panic. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. It is officially fall and it is time to break out all those units that you have not seen for the last year. That includes chipper shredders. So like everybody at home, I might own a lawnmower repair shop where I work on small engines every single day, but that does not mean that I take care of my equipment like I should all the time. So like everybody else, I used my chipper shredder last year and I stuck it in the shed and it has been sitting there ever since. Well, I've got to use it now. So I thought this would be a good time to break out mine and show you the parts that you need and exactly how to fix it all by yourself at home to save you time, money, and frustration in the future. Now, the units that we're using today, I have mine here. It's a Troy built. It comes with the 1150 series Briggs overhead valve engine, which goes on even this big expensive DR here. Um, this is another chipper shredder of mine. Why do I have two chipper shredders? I don't know. <laughs> when I, you have a lawnmower shop and you end up with cool equipment that for cheap, you end up with lots of things. But I'm thinking about selling this one since I got the DR now. The DR is running, but uh, this one is not. So we might put it up for sale. I don't know which one I want to keep yet. I mean, how often do you really use a chipper shredder? It depends. You might use it a lot. You might not. But today we're going to go over all the parts that you need and uh, how to fix it if yours has been sitting all year too. Now what's cool about this video is even though I'm showing it on chipper shredders, if you have a log splitter, this engine went on tons of log splitters. So hopefully uh, this might be the same engine that you need help with. So first thing we're going to do, even though I do not have much faith, is we're going to try to start it and see if it might pop off and burn off some of that old gasoline. It probably isn't, but we might as well take a shot. We're going to put it on choke, push the throttle about midway. These things just sound scary. to pop off I'm gonna say we need to figure this out all right so first thing we're gonna do we're gonna remove the air filter base and we're going to take the air filter off and we're just gonna spray a little spray carburetor cleaner down into the uh, cylinder and see if we can get it to pop off that way we know it still has fire it wants to run but it's not getting the gas that it needs or it needs fresh fuel so I'm going to use a uh, eight millimeter or you could use a 3 8 to take the screws out of the air filter cover The air filter actually is almost in perfect condition because I know we did this last year and probably put a new air filter in it. So uh, it's another time to do it again. So uh, next we are going to take it off choke. We're going to spray down into the cylinder and we're going to see if it pops off. Put it on full throttle. scary sounding but we know we have fire it did pop off but it doesn't want to run so next thing we're going to do is get whatever fuel out of the gas can or gas uh, tank that we can and we're going to uh, go into the carburetor and see if we can uh, get it cleaned out and running right so here's the fuel tank and the fuel line coming from it comes out the side here and goes down to the side nipple on the carburetor so we're going to remove this clamp holding the fuel line to the carburetor and we're going to empty the fuel out that's in it right now. Take our needle nose pliers. Loosen it up a little bit. Just going to let all the old gas run out. Now that we've removed all the old gas, we can go ahead and take off the carburetor. Now we're going to remove the two bolts that are holding on the air filter base. It 
you'll take your choke lever straight out the top. You can just set this aside. Try to make this not come out of your uh, overhead valve cover. And we'll just move that over. Now, ooh, that, that gasket doesn't look good. All right, now that we have the air filter base off, it is easier to get to the spark plug and we are going to take it out since we might go ahead and replace that too with a 5.8 socket. All right, there's two more bolts holding the carburetor onto the carburetor mounting block. So we're going to remove those. Got our mounting block, set it aside. We're gonna remove the carburetor from the uh, throttle linkage. Just be careful that you don't mess your spring up here and, and be aware of where it goes back in. There's a small hole here on the end that the, the uh, spring linkage is gonna go through and the metal hard linkage is gonna go through this center hole right here. So we're gonna turn the carburetor this way and it slides right out and just leave those in place. Now we have the carburetor off. All right, so let's get into this carburetor. Uh, choke lever still looks like it's in good shape. Throttle lever is moving freely and it closes off correctly. You wanna check your butterflies, make sure that they line up perfect. I'm going to take the nut bolt out of the bottom. Oh, I got a little resistance there. Already some sediment is coming out. Let's get this off. Oh, well, it's seen worse, but it's got a lot of debris up in there. And obviously, that's like mud, muddy uh, water, which means, you know, it did get water in it at some point. So it really needed to be cleaned out. So we're going to give this bowl a good spray with the carburetor cleaner and, and get it pretty again. Now you do want to be careful when you are cleaning these out because if you're if you squish it too much, this is very you know light aluminum. You will bend it and it will not seat correctly back on the carburetor. So don't squeeze it too much as you're doing it. But we got it cleaned out pretty good. Next, we can take this old bowl gasket off. It's hard. Let's remove our float. Oh my goodness, it's stuck. So when you have a stuck needle, you wanna be careful because there is that little metal bracket that goes over the plastic prong on the float. And we don't want to break our float because it's still good, but we don't wanna break that little prong off there. So we're gonna put a little spray down in there and see if we can jiggle it out and work it loose. So before I clean this out, let me go over some of the things that you're going to want to purchase to uh, put a kit in this carburetor. Now you can buy a whole carburetor kit if you want, but sometimes it's more expensive than just the few pieces that you need. So I'm going to go over the pieces first. Um, the mounting gasket is a part number 791718. Um, I don't have another one today, so I'm just going to reuse this one. And a lot of times you can because they don't go that, uh, bad that often. So. Um, on the other side, the one that goes against the air filter base, the bowl gasket is going to be a part number 797625. The bowl nut gasket is 797632. And the needle number is 797139. 
So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take this main jet that came, um, it's the bowl nut main jet, and we're going to um, clean it out. I'm going to spray it real good, and then my husband's a guitar player, so I have lots of guitar strings. You can find whatever you want to, to, to poke through these holes to make sure that everything's clean. So I'm going to spray it off, and we're going to clean it out, and that's uh, all you need to do to that. Now on the carburetor, we're going to give it a good spray. We're going to go in through the fuel inlet. That'll make it come out of the um, needle hole. Um, this is, does have a brass seat with a rubber tip needle. So we're going to spray it this way, this way, spray the insides here. We're going to go down this, these center ports with uh, this carburetor cleaner and, and get it all clean again. All right, you're going to want to make sure to go ahead. We're going to clean the outside too while we're at it. Give it a good spray down. We're going to go one way through the fuel inlet make sure to not have it pointed towards your face and wear safety goggles so it doesn't shoot you in the eye we're going to go down through the uh, needle seat area spray in there it's coming out good through the fuel inlet we know you have your uh, ports in here in the center we're going to want to go down through those there's a hole over here spray right there and also on the outside here towards the front you're gonna to wanna to go through this one. That comes out through that hole too, and just a good spray on the inside. Once you have it all sprayed off, go ahead and give it a nice blow. So last but not least, I like to take a Q-tip and go down uh, where your needle seats and don't use anything abrasive. A lot of people do, but I don't think it's a good idea because you can mess up your seat and it'll never seat correctly and it'll leak on you constantly. So we have a real Briggs carburetor here. This is not aftermarket, so we want to take care of it as much as possible. So I'm just going to wet a Q-tip with some carburetor cleaner and uh, clean that port out really good. See, it's still sort of nasty up in there, so. Looks a lot better now. All right, we are totally ready to put this carburetor back together. All right, we have our 797-139 needle. We will have to replace the little pronged tab on it to put it back on to the float and you can see it's got this little uh, horseshoe shape that's where you're going to put the needle back in there and it sort of just pops right into place all right once you've got that back on you can put it back on to the float hanging from the float. We're going to go ahead and stick it back into the carburetor. All right, we're going to stick our float pin back in. And it's going in and out much easier now. Totally not stuck, that's nice. All right, we're going to check. I'm going to blow through and see if I can get anything um, through here. <coughs> Nothing's coming through. So we know that our needle is seating correctly because it doesn't matter if I blow or suck, it does not let anything through. Whenever I bring it up, yeah, it's working fine. So we're going to put our new bowl gasket on. We have a new bowl nut gasket. We're gonna put on our bowl nut jet. And we are ready to roll. Good, and put this gasket on here. Now it has a um, sticker side on it so you don't have to worry about it coming off. We're just going to mount it right back here. Now make sure it does not cover this hole right there because that needs to be able to vent just like that and let's see if it worked all right so we're ready to put our carburetor back on first thing we're going to do is take our throttle rod back and put it back into its little slot here along with the spring now you're going to turn it sideways like we did before once you've got them back on you can see they're on we're going to grab our um, carburetor mounting block and we're going to put slip it back in the back of the carburetor 
inch, we can go ahead and line everything up and put our bolts back in. At this point, we can go ahead and reattach our fuel line. Now we can put our air filter base back on using an eight millimeter. We're going to replace our choke lever and it just slides right down on the top. Now you're, there are notches that you're going to make sure go right into the uh, actual choke lever on top of the carburetor. So make sure you got that lined up correctly. That's working. Now we're going to put our new plug in. Uh, the Briggs overhead valve, take a uh, RC12YC champion plug. Anytime you're putting a plug in, make sure to put it in with your fingers first to make sure that it's threaded correctly. Now, I'm sure more seasoned professionals, they're used to just uh, popping it in and knowing the feel, but you do not want to strip your spark plug threads out. So do it with your fingers first. I'm going to put the air filter and cover back on, put some gas in it, and let's see if it fires up. All right, so we rebuilt the carburetor, filled it up with fresh gas, and now we're gonna see if it starts. Choke. vicious while they're running <laughs> and a little scary too all right let's chip and shred Thanks again for tuning back into Chicanic. Hopefully this video saved you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you found this video helpful, please give me a subscribe and a like and leave a comment. I love to read through the comments and thanks. Have a great day.